Hey, picture perfect people. I hope that you're having a great day so far. I just want to talk to you, if you have a minute, about seed quality. Now, that's not the most exciting subject, but it is a really important one. So please sit down and listen to me as I not only explain why it's so important, but also how you, either as a professional or a homeowner, can determine what seed is going to be the best for your lawn. So if you remember from the video that we did about questions that you should be asking potential aeration and seeding providers that you're looking at hiring, one of the really important things to ask is what kind of seed they're using. Aeration and seeding isn't only an important service, but it's also an expensive one. So where that seed is concerned, you want to be sure that you're getting the quality you deserve for the price that you're paying. In Richmond, we are dealing with fescue. Fescue is king in this area, so you have to keep in mind, as we talked about in our recent video about how often to seed, that it really is needing to be put down every year. Now, if you've ever bought fescue seed, you know that there are a lot of options out there. They range in price, in quality, in source, and it can be pretty overwhelming. It is for professionals too, because each year, a responsible professional is exploring what's going to be best rather than sticking to one specific brand that may not have consistency. So obviously, like with everything, quality is really important. The better the seed that you're using, and ideally a blue tag certified seed is going to be that standard that you should aim for. But the better quality of seed that you use, the fewer weed issues you're going to have, the more successful germination you're going to have, and the better longevity you're going to have for the lawn as a whole. And all of these factors that you want your seed to contribute to are influenced by that seed quality and there are multiple ways in which we really measure seed quality. Every bag of seed, whether you buy it from a distributor or you just go to a home improvement store and grab something off the shelf, has a label. And this label tells you exactly what is composing the makeup of that bag of seed. To an untrained eye, this can look like a lot of gibberish, but to a trained professional or an experienced homeowner that's doing it themselves, you can really get a feel for exactly what you're purchasing based on that information. Now, before I get started, go ahead and comment below whether or not you've ever gone through this yourself before. Do you look at the seed label before you buy a bag of seed or have you just been kind of keeping your fingers crossed and hoping for the best? Let me know your experience. I always want to hear from you. So I'm going to show you an example of a seed label from a bag of seed that we used last year in our aeration seeding services during the fall. Using this label as an example, I'm going to break down for you the four big things that you should be looking for on a seed label when you're trying to estimate exactly what the quality of that seed is. So let's get started. I think you heard me say just a minute ago something about seed being blue tag certified. And I want to explain to you exactly what that means. A lot of the time when you go to Lowe's or Home Depot, it's going to be rare to find seed that has this blue tag on it. And it's got a hole in it because I'm really bad at ripping things that are stapled. But this is a blue tag and this is what you want to see. A seed that is blue tag certified has been tested by a regulation organization and has been proven to be of a certain quality. There are different tag grades, different colors, but blue is the second best. The top best is gold tag and this is sod quality. Yeah, that's really nice, but it's stupid expensive and a lot of blue tag certified seed is actually able to be qualified as gold tag they just don't bother with that. So if you're going to a landscape supply store and you are able to find blue tag certified seed, that's going to be the best bet. That's also not necessarily in everybody's budget, especially if they're doing it themselves. It's what Picture Perfect uses. We go big, we don't go home. But there may be room for compromise so long as you're making an educated and informed decision about your seed. That's where the seeds label comes in. So let's break down how to interpret the label on a bag of seed. 
As you can see, the label gives a lot of information. Everything from an analysis of exactly what is comprising the makeup of this bag based on a percentage, the testing that was done on its germination, when it was tested, where it comes from, how many pounds of seed are in the bag, everything is on here. So like I said, there are four specific things that I really want you to look at. First is right here. A grass seed label will show you the specific varieties of the grass that are blended into the mix of seed. These seed varieties are like different subspecies of the grass that you're cultivating. They may have slight phenotypic variations between them based on exactly what they are and how similar they are to one another, but the important thing is that they have a variation between them in terms of strengths, sensitivities, and weaknesses. And this gives your lawn kind of a backup grass potential. If a disease comes through that one variety of the seed is more susceptible to being impacted by, you still have two or more blends that are gonna be more resilient. I've seen bags that are just a single blend of seed, and I've seen bags that have almost 10 blends of seed. So there's a lot of variety there, but in our opinion, you want to go for something that's at least triple blended. Second, these seed labels will show the tested rate of a successful germination for the varieties that are included, and it breaks down each one. This number is most commonly between 80 and 90%. The higher the rate of guaranteed germination shown on the label, the more successful your seed will be. This is really important. The more viable your seed is, the more growth you can expect, trusting that you water it in and tend to it properly. Third, and to me most importantly, a grass seed label will indicate the percentage of weed seed that makes up the total amount of seed in the bag. If you want the best grass seed, this number should always be 0, 0.00 with absolutely no weed presence. This may seem extreme, but it's the only way that you will know that you're not contributing to any kind of weed problem in your lawn. I know I talked to you guys about this way back in the spring when we were discussing spring seeding, but let's just go through the math again as a refresher. A 50 pound bag of fescue seed, which is about the weight that a standard sized lawn in the RVA area needs, has over 11 million seeds within that bag. 11 million. So even if the analysis on your bag of seed says that only 0.01% of that bag is any kind of weed, that's 1 100th of a percent, which is 1 100th of the whole. So we're talking 1 10,000th of the bag. That seems like a crazy small number, but when you think of 1 10,000th of over 11 million, that's actually well over a thousand weed seeds. Over a thousand, over a thousand. Can you imagine a standard residential lawn being exposed to a thousand new dandelions or something a lot worse? That's a nightmare. So even that 0.01% is not where you want to compromise. And I hate to break it to you, but a lot of bags of seed, especially the ones that a lot of people use that are those recognizable name brands, have a lot more than 0.01%, they've got 0.05%, even 0.1%. Don't, don't risk it, just get the 0.00% weed seed. You will save yourself so much stress the following year. Now, the other variable on the seed label that kind of relates to weed seeds is up above where it says other crop seeds. This is much harder to find that isn't going to say something. But these aren't necessarily weeds. These are considered other weeds, other plants than the grasses that are listed above, but not necessarily weed varieties. These could just be other types of fescue. They could be like a bluegrass. It's something that's being grown in the system that most people wouldn't consider a weed, but that isn't part of that guaranteed seed blend analyzed above. For consistency's sake and to reduce the risk of a grass that you don't want entering the mix, you still want this number to be as low as possible. That means that the seed is really clean, but there's more forgiveness here because it's not quite as big of a deal as the weeds, and it's really hard to find something that's completely clean in both respects. 
The fourth and final factor that we pay close attention to when analyzing the seed that we're using is how that total weight within the bag is really being attributed. I'm showing you a different label because this one's a better example than what we ended up using at the end of last year. More and more types of seed are being coated in starter fertilizer, fungicide, or other material that aids in the successful germination and development of the seed. And that's valuable to anybody looking to have those added benefits and not have to apply those separate things. But this coating can actually be the source of half of the total weight of the bag of seed. I've seen a lot of people make the mistake of buying a 50 pound bag of coated seed, not realizing that it's only 25 pounds worth of actual seed. And they apply it at a per pound rate rather than looking at the actual amount of seed going down on that area, and as a result, get really thin germination. So this isn't so much of a factor that impacts your quality of the seed. It's the same thing with inert matter, which is any little bits of stem or anything that might've gotten mixed in. That doesn't matter in terms of the purity, but it matters in terms of calculating exactly how much square footage you can get out of a single bag. This is important not just for your application rate, which is always important, but also for your wallet. If all of a sudden you have to buy two bags instead of one, that can get more expensive and you should be braced for that. If you're a professional offering aeration and seeding services to people in your community, or you're a homeowner who wants to do it for yourself and maybe for your neighbors, finding good quality seed is vital for the long-term success of the lawn, both in terms of the health and germination of the fescue, as well as any kind of weed development that you may or may not end up seeing. And if you're a homeowner that's planning on hiring a company to do your seeding for you, whether you're a picture-perfect client, a prospective picture-perfect client, or just somebody looking for advice, it's always a good idea to ask the company that you're working with what quality seed they're using. You have to make sure that you're getting a good quality seed. And if they tell you something that doesn't tell you what that quality is, just where they got it or what the brand name is, don't feel afraid to ask to see the label. A company that is transparent and good to work with will be more than happy to share that information with you because they have confidence in the quality of the service that they're providing. So like I said before, comment below to share with me your thoughts and experiences on seed quality or anything else that you're seeing with your lawn right now. Are you ready for aeration seeding? Have you started planning for it yet? We're getting really close. We're only a couple weeks away at this point from the start in our area. So I'm really excited to be able to help you guys with these important aspects of that really, really necessary service. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to future videos and we will talk to you again later. Have a picture perfect day.